On today's video, getting scammed as an Uber driver, I have to say that as an Uber driver, you will eventually run into a scam. What I'm very sad to say, however, is that out of all the types of neighborhoods and areas where you could run into a potential scammer, it looks like the suburb where I live of Lakewood Ranch has the most scumbag type people. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some of the scams that I've ran into while being an Uber driver. Most Uber drivers will eventually get scammed by somebody, but unfortunately, what I don't understand is why? Why this suburban setting? Why are the scummiest people here? Now I was debating whether I should make today's video, so I sit outside my balcony today, pondering, should I really make a video talking about, about the community I live in? And then as I'm thinking about would this be a video I should make, I look outside and from my balcony I can see a vehicle that's worth easily over $100,000 and they're dumping their residential garbage into a commercial garbage can after the business is closed. And I tell myself, yeah, we have to make this video. Now what I find interesting is that this area of Lakewood Ranch outside of Bradenton and Sarasota where I live is a fairly expensive area. It's definitely not an affordable place to live. And you would think that the most scumbag people that you run into while Ubering would be in the poor neighborhoods. But it turns out that the vast majority of the undesirables that you meet while Uber driving are actually gonna be in plush suburbs like Lakewood Ranch. What makes the people that live in places like this be more scumbags? Perhaps they feel more comfortable doing their crimes in a place like this because it's less expected. I mean, after all, when you get scammed, it's not a definite wrong. It's a question mark. And really, the art of scamming people is that you're in a gray area, a questionable area. Did this person really rip me off or was this person actually mistaken or doing something, uh, misunderstanding of some sort? The fact that it's a gray area is what lends itself to scams. Scams are not definitely bad. It's hard to pinpoint whether somebody's scamming is actually malignant or if there's just somebody having a misunderstanding or something along those lines. But I'll tell you this, I have driven over a thousand miles for Uber at this point. And on this particular day driving in the rain, I ran into two people who I definitely think were trying to scam me. Now, scammer fraud is, again, not a definite wrong, so it's hard to pinpoint fault, but let's talk about some of these things that I have seen as an Uber driver, and in particular, I've discovered that the particular neighborhood that I live in, in Lakewood Ranch, has the scummiest people that I've dealt with as an Uber driver. And that's pretty sad to say, because I do go into places that people can't afford a ride, but they're still honestly trying to pay you. I work in neighborhoods where I know that the people that I'm picking up simply cannot afford to give me a tip. And while that's frustrating, at least they're still paying their fair share. They're not trying to rip you off. And I also work in areas where I know it is just people that they might not even smell that good because they've worked a 10 hour shift in the heat and now they're in my car and they smell bad, very uncomfortable, but at least they're working honestly for a living. But then you hop on over to Lakewood Ranch and you have people living in gated communities wearing expensive clothes, literally trying to rip you off a few dollars. And as I said, I'm sitting here from my balcony and I'm watching somebody unload residential garbage into a commercial dumpster as if it were normal out of a $100,000 car. Now you figure if you're driving a $100,000 car, you can afford to pay somebody to haul that garbage for you, but they would rather be scumbags. And if you're watching this take place and it's an old beat up truck, you might want to call the cops because the guy's in a $100,000 car, you might think he's a supervisor or a manager. But at the end of the day, these are people who hide among the properness of a rich setting to do all types of scumbag things. Let's talk about how these scams actually work. So it was raining. Now, when it rains, you have a surge in certain areas because people cancel their plans and they're not going to walk home with their groceries or just things happen. And now people all of a sudden need an Uber ride. So on a day like today where it's raining, the surges go up. So one of the scams that I ran into goes like this. The person knows that they're in an area that's surging and they have to pay more money for an Uber ride. So they'll book the Uber ride to a residential address 
that's right outside of the surge. Now, since it was raining, I actually pulled into a driveway, which could have got me hurt. I figured, here's the address. I'm going to this specific address. I pull into the driveway, and I pull in backwards so that the person coming in can open the door and get in the truck. Well, it turns out that most of the time when you're Uber driving, you definitely don't pull in the driveway. You wait by the road. But because it was a heavy downpour, I figured it was a courteous thing to do to pull into this driveway. Looking back now, that could have got me hurt because it turns out that the person was using that address as a bait to get me to go out. When I finally arrived to the location, they're not there. They're somewhere else. But I've already opened the drive, which means that now I have to drive to that location, which happened to be in a $4.50 surge area. But I was now in a residential area that didn't have a surge. But I've opened up this ride. As soon as I arrived on the property, they sent me a message saying, hey, I'm somewhere else. Now, looking back on it, the thing to do would be to open up the app and say, I'm waiting. And until that person arrives, they would have to pay me. In other words, you can flip the scam on them. But if you're a decent person like me, you drive a few blocks to where that person's at. Looking back on it now, I got scammed. Now, the person that did this acted like they didn't know how to use the Uber app. But looking back on it now, they were young and they definitely should have known how to use the Uber app, which makes me wonder, did I get scammed by this person? Even more, then again, did this passenger really do this on purpose or was it a mistake? Well, again, that's the beauty of scamming. It's that it, it's a gray area where it's harder to tell if it was done on purpose or not. So you don't get a definitive answer. But I will tell you this. I told the person, you wasted my time and the right thing to do would be for you to tip me. Well, they tipped me about $3, but the surge was $4.50, which means that they still ripped me off $1.50. Plus, they made me drive around needlessly to an area where I wasn't supposed to be and they knew it probably and I could have got hurt by pulling into somebody's driveway in the middle of a rainstorm and they could have assumed absolutely anything. Thus, we wonder, was this a scam? Well, here's your answer. I had somebody do the same exact thing at the same exact Publix a matter of just 20 minutes later, which goes to show most likely it was purposeful. Now, not only is it raining, but it's also when kids are getting out of school. So, yeah, this whole area is surging, and I could have made 30 or $40 in, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, and I ended up making it in two hours because people were wasting my time. So the next customer gets into the vehicle, and they are heading, again, to a residential address. Another person who was too young to be as stupid as they were pretending to be who did the same exact thing. I put them in the car and they tell me, hey, could we stop at the Publix? And I said, well, you have to do it through the app. I'm not going to do it unless, you know, and I had heard that this was a scam, so I already know it's a scam. But again, I'm doing this for YouTube, so let's roll with it and see how it works. I, I'm, I know they're scamming me at this point, but I wanted to see how they were going to move just to feel them out. And, and also, as I'm talking to the person, I'm asking them questions like, you know, do you really think I'm stupid? Do I look stupid? You know, do you, you know I'm, I'm actually like acknowledging it subtly just to make the person almost feel indignant. But I'm not doing it in a disrespectful or direct way. I'm doing it in a passive aggressive way to where the person kind of knows you are aware of what they're doing. You're going to let them do it just to watch them do it, which people really don't like when you do that to them. Because they think they're working undercover. They think they're slick, but you're letting them know, hey, you know, you're not slick, but I'm going to watch you do it just to see if you think you're slick, which most times I've done that to people. It really never works out good because they really become indignant at you doing that because you're exposing them and, and you're watching them be exposed while they do it. And you're giving this look like you're really pathetic. But anyways, I took this person to Publix. Now, I told them, you have to go through the app and do it the right way. Well, they're acting like they don't know how to use the app, which is complete garbage. This is a young person, and I actually saw them picking up Uber rides later on the next day. So, uh, interestingly enough, it's definitely not their first rodeo. They're kind of systematically abusing Uber riders. Let's not forget the fact that this person was carrying an awfully large amount of things, almost using my Uber as some type of like mass transport transportation 
uh, for for bulky items, which I'm pretty sure at some point you have to draw the line and say, okay, that's too much. But anyways, this person's scamming the system. So I took her to her unplanned destination, and uh, which involved the publics again, or this vicinity here. I'm not going to be too elaborate on the places because you still have to protect their privacy. But we make this unplanned stop, which the person said that they did it right through the app. But I'm looking at the app in front of me. It, it automatically activates. And what the person did is that she re-entered the same information she did the first time into the app because if she had done it the right way she could have adjusted the route while in route but she decided to adjust the route back to the same original thing and tell me she did it the right way this time even though she didn't so she's scamming me okay and it involves a stop at this Publix over here again these are young people that live in a suburb okay they know how to use a phone I'm, they're not stupid. I got elderly people who use the app to get them from point A to point B, okay? And they figure it out. So uh, my dad is like in his 70s, and I'm sure if I taught him how to use Uber, he could figure it out on his phone. So you're not going to tell me that a young person who wears name brand clothes and lives in the suburbs can't figure out how to use a, a, a Uber app. They, they know how to use it. They just think you're stupid. And furthermore... I get scammed again at this Publix, but of course, this person wants to make an unplanned stop that they're not paying you for. Now, the person was carrying a lot of very bulky items, items that to me looked illegitimate. They didn't look like this person was really needing to care. The things were worthless, okay? So I realized that what the person did is that they put items inside the vehicle and in the trunk, and they were trying to distance me from them while they're unloading the items. Of course, I'm not stupid. I'm not just gonna let a stranger start putting stuff in and out of my car out of sight. And I think that what this girl was really trying to do is get me, because I didn't trust her. I already knew I don't trust this girl. So she was like, she opened her door. It's like, yo, let's get the stuff out of the car. And I'm like, okay, let's get the stuff out of the car. But she's still there at the passenger seat and her door's open, but she's not getting out. I said, no, you're getting out first, okay? Because I figured that what she might have been trying to do was to steal my personal belongings from my vehicle. And her bulky garbage items were nothing more than a distraction. I didn't trust her. I knew she was scamming. And then I realized I've been around a lot of thieves. I grew, I've grown up around prolific thieves. Um, I come from a very large family and I grew up around prolific thieves. So I know what thief when I see one. I know how they operate. And uh, I know every trick in the book. And what she was trying to do is she was using her all her extra baggage as a distraction, okay? So this is where you got to be careful with these people that are scamming you. They're usually moving a lot of, you know, grocery bags, a lot of things. And they're using that almost as a bait to distract you to see if they can get your wallet, your personal, anything. Okay, so these are people that they're going to carry extra bulky packages and stuff like that. Extra stuff that they don't really need to be carrying around. And they do it so that they can separate you from the front of the vehicle or separate you from the trunk. But what she didn't figure was that I was going to walk with her to the trunk when they get that stuff. I was going to walk to her to the back seat, walk to her to the front seat. There's no point where she was going to be not in eyesight. And also, I tell people I had my back surgery. So I tell people, hey, I just had a back surgery. So not a chance in the world I'm touching anything. And whatever you're touching, I'm watching. So this is some type of distraction um, you know, distraction. Basically, they create a distraction with all their bulky items to see if they can separate you from the front of the vehicle where likely your wallet is or personal possessions. So I figured that part out because, again, I've been around prolific thieves my whole life, so I really do know how thieves work. So now that I know that the person is trying to scam me and that they're trying to pull all types of crazy stuff, I'm, I asked them where they're from. Now, Uber doesn't like you to do that. It's part of their... Uh, policy but if you're violating the policy on your end i'll violate a policy on my end and make it make the score even you know um it's just the way i was taught to do business if you're doing an inappropriate thing I'll, I'll i'll do one as well and now we're both on the same level so i asked her where she's from now this is a question that we deal with on a daily basis as human beings people are always curious about where you're from what are you doing this and that but what i found kind of interesting about this person is that this person since they're being scammy, since they're being cheating, they lied to me about where they're from. 
Well, here's what they don't know. That I've been everywhere. I'm like, that's not, I've been everywhere, man. I've been, I've been everywhere. So I asked the person, oh, you're from this place, huh? Well, how's it living there? And of course, they've never been there. So they're starting to make things up. And they're making, oh, they're, the mountains are beautiful and this and that. I'm like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you the exact conversation. But obviously, the person was a complete fool. And I said, oh, you're from this place. So you must know about this or that or that or that. And it keeps just a series of questions that I knew the answer to, but they didn't. So they obviously weren't from there. I mean, they're scamming their lines, so they're not going to tell you where they're from. But uh, I certainly had, uh, you know, I was baffled. I was like, oh, really? Oh, you've been, you're from this place and you've never, uh, you've never seen this or you've never done that or, or you didn't know about this or wow, you didn't know. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm acting stupid. I'm playing the stupid card, but I'm not really stupid. I'm, I'm just, uh, making them run with their lie to see how far they're willing to go. And these people are so stupid that they really think that they pulled a slick one on you. I mean, they really think they pulled a slick one on me even though I'm sitting here watching them. And again, I tell them, you know, make sure you give me a tip because, you know, you're still wasting my time. You know, you make it right. And of course they don't because they're scamming. So this person said, oh yeah, I'll give you a tip. I'll make sure I do you right. But they didn't give me a tip. And um, I, I see this, I live in Lake Ranch, so I've seen this person around town already. And and they're always up to something shady, I'll tell you. It's almost like they're, they're, um, they're always up to something weird. But uh, anyways... My point being, guys, that it's interesting that I work in bad neighborhoods, all these dangerous neighborhoods I go into, and it's here in Lakewood Ranch where you have people who engage in the scummiest behavior. And then there's always the biggest elephant in the room. That is that sometimes people put a racial context on those types of people are the worst. And we already know in the United States who gets the worst of the worst as far as a reputation, but it's not. It's young, blonde, you know, uh, Karen uh, type people who are actually doing the scummiest things under the cover of their suburban life. And when it comes to transporting dealers, I have had two people who I'm pretty sure were using me as a mule. And somehow they were also both in Lakewood Ranch. Um, now I, again, I, I'm not retarded. I, I, uh, I'm not stupid and I know what somebody up to something bad looks like. And I've had two people who I'm almost positive were up to something as far as, you know, illegal transportation using me as a mule. And they were both on a Lakewood ranch as well. And then again, you would, and now I could have had this happen in all types of bad neighborhoods too and not been aware of it. But the question arises Dude, there's a lot of um, scummery going on here in Lakewood Ranch, and this isn't the type of place where you would expect it. Now, I've lived here for a year and a half, and I didn't expect it, but this whole Uber experience has really opened me up to human behavior and what things are like, and now I'm starting to pay closer attention, and it shouldn't be a surprise for me because I lived in Naples, Florida, very wealthy, very affluent community, and in Naples, Florida... I actually had uh, the experience of figuring out that the more money people have, the scummier they behave. And sometimes it's poor people who have more values and just more core. Uh, and I know, you know, that might go against prejudices that people have. People think it's poor people who are always doing bad stuff. But in reality, you know, I lived in rural Alabama. When it came to hand-to-hand -hand transactions with customers, it was always very straightforward. I mentioned that on my videos and in Naples, Florida, where it's rich people, they're always scamming. They're always snaking around. They're always trying to see how they can get a dollar from underneath you. So at the end of the day, Lakewood Ranch, beautiful community, nice suburban area, is where I have encountered the scummiest people doing this whole Uber thing. Where back to back in the same day, I've been scammed, burned twice by people who they act like they don't know the rules. They act like they don't know how to use the app. But if you're a young person living in a suburban place, get the crap out of here. You know what you know what you're doing. You're orchestrating a fraud. And to me, being a scumbag is being a scumbag. I don't care if it's with a gun or with trickery or finesse. A scum is a scum no matter what. And I find it interesting that in our society, we see certain people as the ones, they're the criminals, you know, they're the thugs because of their race or their background. But in reality, you flip the script and you know, you pay close attention. 
And it's the people on the other side, the rich people living in, in suburbs who are actually up to the most effery. And we don't even see it because we assume that those barriers of safety are there. And back to living in Naples. I learned living in Naples that a lot of those rich people are nothing more than a bunch of scumbags who got the money they got by screwing other people over. They have no problem giving themselves luxuries, giving themselves expensive clothes, giving themselves luxury cars. But then they turn around and screw over a working class person. You know, that right there is pretty low. At least a criminal who walks into a place with a weapon or somebody who straight up does a jacking, at least that person has uh, adrenaline and they're not afraid to go out there and do something. But on the other hand, you know, there are people who are more cowardly in the way they move. And the people that are more cowardly are actually more dangerous because at least the guy that's hurting you is doing it up front. But we live in a world of finesse. I mean, I live here in Lakewood Ranch, guys, and I recently had a back surgery, okay? I have seen some economical straights. Like, I'm Ubering now, you know? Uh, you don't end up Ubering if things are going great, but thankfully we're still able to keep our house, we're still able to keep our cars and our lifestyle to some degree. You know, we're still living good. Not as good as I was, you know, last year before I got hurt, but I'm still living good. I'm still eating and stuff. I got more problems to take care of, but, you know, it never crossed my mind when I'm considering, you know, okay, now we have medical expenses and now, you know, I'm not able to work as much as I used to. So it never crossed my mind to call an Uber driver and scam him out of $5. It never crossed my mind to dump garbage in a commercial garbage can instead of paying to get rid of it. I, it, you know, it doesn't really register in my mind that here I am living in this beautiful suburban setting, and now all of a sudden, in this beautiful suburban setting that I live in, I'm going to start finessing people out of $3. That, to me, wouldn't, it wouldn't even cross my mind. I mean... It crossed my mind to do something of a bigger scale. Like, it didn't, of course, I'm not going to do it. But at least, you know, when you're desperate, you start thinking about options. But, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't even register my mind to, to in a hard economical strength. To, you know, what crossed my mind is, okay, let's try to, my wife's a realtor. Let's try to get her some customers. Uh, let's try to make some videos to get more action. Let's try to, you know, recycle some old. Like, I'm thinking, you know, let me find a solution where I can make more money so I can pay the things I need. Never for a moment that I think let's let's finesse somebody out of a dollar. So I don't know what type of petty mentality it takes to finesse an Uber driver out of three dollars, especially when you live in a suburb where rents are twenty five hundred dollars a month. But that's the mentality some people have. And again, I cannot bring my mind to function so miserably. I'm trying to figure out how I can make ten thousand dollars at a time. I'm trying to figure out how I can make a hundred thousand dollars at a time. I can't wrap my mind around the notion of stealing from somebody a few dollars. But that's the petty mindset that some people have. And again, I don't have that mindset, so I can't comprehend it. But there you go. At about five or six rides that I did on this day in Lakewood Ranch, two of them were straight up finessing and scamming me. And that's very disappointing. It's uh, just... And they took advantage of the rainstorm, a peak hour when you're rushing, you're not paying attention to detail. So... Definitely a lot of level of finesse involved in doing that, and very disappointing, especially considering that I live in this community and I moved here for safety. And you're, you know, you don't have crime here in Lakewood Ranch, but you sure have a bunch of freaking scumbags. Just to give you a comparison, the day before I did seven rides in North Sarasota. That's the worst neighborhood anywhere around here, the poorest neighborhood, highest crime rates, and not a single one of those persons tried to scam me or finesse me or in fact like i've said at this point i've probably done a hundred of these rides okay and nobody's tried to finesse me anywhere except for here in lakewood ranch and they both happened right around the same time and at the same exact shopping plaza which goes to show that some of these fancy suburbs like lakewood ranch are nothing more than bougie suburbs you know people pretending like they have money pretending like they got it made, but in reality, they're nothing more than scumbags who can afford to pay a few hundred dollars more in rent than the average person. So here in the poor neighborhoods of Sarasota, I'm picking up people at seven o'clock at night who worked all day and they smell bad and they're not even able to give you a tip, but at least they earned their money. Honestly, they worked. But our society wants to paint these young people in the inner city as they're the bad ones, but it's really 
the people that are living in the suburbs that are the scummiest. Even among the criminal world, this type of behavior is not respectable. Give you an example. A guy who goes to prison for robbing a bank or robbing a jewelry store, he's going to be a hero in there. That's a bold, respectable move within the criminal world, right? Bank robbers, jewelry, those guys are heroes in prison, okay? Now, here's a guy who finessed his grandma out of her social security check by putting it in his name. That guy gets no respect. That guy is going to be washing somebody's underwear. So even within the criminal world, these are petty crimes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, I even, I'm not a criminal, but even within the own criminal rules would dictate that somebody who's a, a, a jewelry heistman or a, or a bank robber, as stupid as it may be, to do something like that because you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison probably but even they have more merit for what they're doing than somebody who's finessing and scamming because it's just a lower type of crime and uh it doesn't have you know punishment versus crime are two different things but morality are two different things i know guys that will straight up walk into a store and hold the freaking place up but they would never finesse their grandma or they would never rob a working class person of $3 through an Uber app. Their morals wouldn't let them do that. They'd go and they'd hit a big lick because they're criminals, but they wouldn't finesse a working class person out of $3. Their, their, their morals wouldn't let them do that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that these suburban, sub, suburban scammy type people, they actually have less morals than, than criminals, than bank robbers. than than. And I know that sounds crazy for me to say that, but in reality... Even criminals have more morality. People that do bank robberies and do stuff like that, even they wouldn't scam and finesse somebody, a working class person out of a few dollars. They'd consider that scummy. So just so you know, if you think that these types of finesses are funny or to take, you know, that right there is actually lower than a bank robber. Because at least a bank robber is going to go to jail and get some respect. If you're doing some finesse type crap, there, nobody respects that. It's, a, it's not a respectable crime. It's uh it's scummy, basically. Not even in the criminal world is respected.